It's time to leave your safe space. This is Rush to Reason on KLZ 560. You are the sunshine of my life. There we go, Dan, the old sunshine. I like the song. I do too. Sunshine of my life. It's a good song. You know, tomorrow goes... <laughs> no, not just... John, it just takes, kidding. It takes a while. Yes, I know. You're not even going to notice tomorrow. It's not shorter. over in, in a day or two. I, I, I get except it. Except you'll, you'll be there with your clock. Ah, there it went. And I went that one minute. Hey, I mean, I love this day, and then I hate tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways. All right, Kurt Rogers joining us now. Affordable Interest Mortgage. His phone number, by the way, 720-895-0500. Kurt, welcome. How's things today? Uh, thanks. Uh, you got sunshine it's out here. How can you not? 80, 85 degrees. I love it. And a little bit of hail, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Much better. All right, so the average price of a home is exceeding what now? 500000 Over 500 Wow. Actually, about 520 That's what they're saying. That's average. That's average. Okay. Now, does that vary from county to county, or is that yes? yes. Or is that the metro average? That's the way, when you put the whole uh, metro area together. That's the average in the metro. But some are bringing more, some are bringing less. So are there are there down. still any areas out there that you know would be somewhat affordable for a middle class person? I mean, uh, yeah, Lyman. That that's a <laughs> Lyman. Thanks, John. Great. I get to look forward to the so, well, okay. hey, time out, time out. I'm not making fun of Lyman. I'm just saying no. you have to go east. That's all I'm well, saying. But you know, all roads in Colorado go to Lyman. They do. They all head to all Lyman. I see. That's right. They it's do. They all lead right through there. That's yeah, true. You got to go east. You got to go north and east. And, yeah. You now, there is. The now, and real quick, I mean this sincerely. There are some places like Strasburg and some places that aren't that far east where there's really Correct. some pretty good deals right now. Correct. And there's some, yeah, there's some actually some great ways to finance them because they're classified as USDA, so you can do 100%. Uh, okay. So they're actually, and everything's growing in that area. Got it. Which is really just a little bit east of DIA, right? Uh huh. So it's like Goodland, Kansas. Not quite. It's close. Just kidding, Dan. A little just kidding. Too. Just kidding. I got to use my binoculars just to see the mountains. Kidding. I'm just kidding. It's not that. Those of you in Strasburg, I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. No. I've been there. It's actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And they actually, by the way, they've done a really good job of marketing that little community as a place where if you want to go and get more home, more land, less money, that's where you go. Yeah. Now, and, and by the way, everybody listening, if you're a transplant to this area, let me give you a little tip. Real quick, it's really simple. Look west. See those big things that poke up out of the ground? Those things called the Rocky Mountains? The closer you get, the more money it costs. Right. That's the a farther fact. away you get, the less money it costs. That's about it. That's, that's, my, that's my tip of the day. Well, a, tip. a lot of people that are moving into the state, they don't mind it, uh, being condensed. Okay. If you're really from Colorado, you like your space. So moving east and taking some of that or going south like towards Sedalia, you have more room. Got it. And that's what people that after you've been here for a while, you kind of get used to. I need more space. And you're willing to maybe sacrifice some views and things like that to have the space. Or distance. Because views, work, another, yeah. there's another thing real quick. That's another tip number two. Views cost money. <laughs> yes, they do. Don't they? And now, if you live in Kansas, probably not so much, unless it's a view of a golf course or something like that. But here, you can't tell views cost money. You, you, don't, you don't know the difference. But here, <laughs> views cost money. Yes. If you can see the mountains or a large park or some open space, or if you're on a golf course, those all cost more money. That's correct. Correct? Okay. So, does that medium price of, you know, over 500 k affecting home sales? Uh, right now, no. Um, and I'm not trying to be negative, but eventually it will. As rates go up okay. and home prices keep appreciating, even with all the people moving in and the technology and the raises that people are getting, eventually it's going to cap. And when it does, that's going to have people start to reevaluate what they want to do. It's not now. One of the things with, with a house, while your value is going up, if you're thinking about buying another house, yeah, you're going to be able to get yours and sell yours quickly, but you're now going to pay more to get the next one. Okay. And there becomes That's a cost. Relative. As that starts to change, that, you know, let's say your house goes up 8% this year. You're going to pay 6% commission to sell it. What's the net effect? Two. And then you also got to start looking at, well, if I, I, my house is going to make me money, but it's going to cost me an extra 100000 to get the house I want, I'm also going to give up my neighbors. Now, sometimes that's good, but most times that's not. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I live in a neighborhood that's I never really let nice. the neighbors bother me on whether I was going to move or not, but that's just me. Correct. And most people listening probably understand that. Uh, yeah. What, John? Every time you yelled at them to stay off your yard. That's right. You know, get off my grass! I didn't mind moving. You'd have to use a <laughs> megaphone on your property. That's right. And I would now, yes. That's right. And the other thing is, whenever, whatever house you're going to buy, while you may have issues with your house, you're probably buying a, a house that's going to have other issues that you're not quite familiar oh, with. Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. There's no perfect property. Money. 
So when you when you're looking now, you got to start thinking of those That's true. things. There's no yeah there, no. You, to your point, there's no perfect person. There's no perfect property. Every one of them has some give and some take, some pros and some cons, and Correct. it just depends on what you want. Correct. At the end of the day, now, when it comes to all of what we're talking about, and some people are thinking, you know, maybe it's just easier for me to build a house or you know buy one of the new homes that are out on the marketplace rather than trying to find something used. What's your thoughts there? Well, um, I think it's a good idea to buy a new home. Everybody, I believe, needs to go through that at least once in their life to have that experience. It's an experience. It's definitely an experience. It's, yes, it is. It can end up as very pleasurable, but there's a lot of stress. Or you can get through. divorced, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it, it can be very difficult. Um, what are you laughing at? You know I'm right. <laughs> you, you are right, yeah. Uh, I think it's a good experience to go through, but sometimes, you know, buying a, a pre-existing home it becomes a little bit easier. Uh, it's a lot easier. Yes. Because the other thing people forget about when they buy a new house, now depending upon the home builder, I get some things come turnkey, shades, the whole bit. But there's always things with a new home you're going to spend money on that you probably won't with a used home. Things like decorations and draperies and furniture. blinds and things like furniture, things like that. I mean, you're just landscaping. Say, yeah, you're getting, yeah, landscaping is a big one. No, big, one. huge one. Even if you even if you get a new house with the front yard done. You still have that back, and, and no offense, folks, I'm in the landscaping world, I know this. Those things are getting put in as cheaply as they possibly can. You're getting an inch-and-a-half caliper tree. I mean, you are not getting much in the landscaping with a new home. Why? Because they've got a guy coming in or a company coming in that is ripping those things and putting them in as quickly as they possibly can. There's very little topsoil. I mean, it is in. wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and off you go. That's how they're doing it. The looks. That's it. That's it. That's it. And you are not getting much. So, yeah, you're going to spend money typically on areas, patios, things like that that are not in the home. And those are things that add to the price, which, again, if you like that and you like doing those things around the house, then so be it. Now, a used home, a little different situation. You're also going to do some things typically on the U-homes, a used home that may not have fit what you wanted in the first place either. Correct. Got to factor all that in. Yeah, those are some of the things you have to look at, especially as home prices go up. Which leads me to the next question for Kurt. You can also refi your current home add a little bit of money into it, and end up with maybe a better house in the end than if you were to move. And, and that's what we're starting to see with people. As the house prices go up, they're saying, well, I can go out and get a home equity line of credit. I might pull out thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars and do some minor recon to my house. Well, that's a good idea. Sometimes a home equity line of credit, because the rate is adjustable and it's an interest-only payment, Got it. it makes sense but is it really the best economic thing to do your house? Now, you're going to increase the value of your home, and it's going to work for you. But that's not necessarily the best way to go. There are new loan programs out now that will go anywhere from 35000 up to over 300000 to let you f rehab your home, as they call it. Okay. And the, the 35000 are for the minor stuff. But I've got a guy spending $300,000 to rehab his home. It'll take his house from eight fifty to a million two when oh. he's done with value. Oh. The bank will give him 75% of that. They'll loan him 95% of the future value of the home. Wow. So he can have it all done. He does not need to extend the term on his loan. So let's say you have a house, you've had it for four years. You can stay in a 26-year, do the rehab, got and it. now you got the house the way you want it. Right, and didn't move. And didn't move and didn't have to spend all that money. Got it. And you're still going to get a great rate because the rate doesn't go up on these loans as it would normally on like a HELOC. It's not costing more, mm. and you don't have to extend the term. That's starting to become quite popular. Okay. So if you're somebody that's been maybe out of the market for a while, use Dan as an example. So you've been out of the market for a little while. You're looking to get back in it. What are some of the things initially you need to do to jump back in? Um, pay your bills on time. Okay. Put a little bit of money in the bank. Okay. Um, How much is a little bit? Yeah, great question. Because Cassie's asked that before as well. So, how much you know, for first-time home buyers? And Dan is considered a no, first-time home buyer, again, so he's yeah. qualifying. What is the basics for what they have to have in the bank? Uh, you can actually get into a, a home with one percent down or one thousand dollars down. But understand, when you do that, the risk is higher to the bank, so the rates are going to be higher. Okay. Okay. You can't have the best of both. But if you can put down three to five percent, three hundred thousand dollar home, that's anywhere from ten thousand to fifteen thousand dollars. You can get into a nice home. You can still have good rates and good payments and buy a home with no mortgage insurance. Ooh. So just how you – how you now, that money can also be a gift. You can have a family member give you any portion of that money. Or a friend, friend, friendly talk show host. Any of Either those. one. <laughs> any Either one way. of those. Either way it works. And, you know, it didn't used to be that way. 
No. Used no. to be, no, you, you know, back to when I was a yours. kid. Yeah, back when I was a kid, if somebody gave you some money, you had to have this gift letter and notarizations and all sorts of crap you had to, to see go with their it. Bank account. Oh, it was ridiculous. No. You you couldn't just, you know, if somebody gave you a five thousand dollar, you know, check to help you out, you had to prove where that came from. Was it legit? You owe it back, blah, 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 blah. It was a pain in the rear. It they don't really do that was. now. No. No, it's not near as bad as it used to be in that area. I guess they what they kind of figured that okay, if a family member loans you ten grand, it's between you and the family member as to whether you get it back or not. Well, they which it is anyway. It has to be a gift. You can't right. have it can't be a payment plan. They just need to prove that because of the anti money laundering law that you actually had the money before you gave it. Got it. That's a pretty simple thing to do. Got so it. you can't be like a drug lord handing out cash. Yeah, or work in a marijuana store and give cash. That doesn't work. Got it. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so thousand uh, dollars down or. 3 to 5% down. We'll come back talk more about that. Kurt Rogers with us again. Affordable interest mortgage. 720-895-0500 is Kurt's number. You can call him. He'll meet you with a cup of coffee anywhere you want up and down the front range and go over a lot of what we're talking about today. In the meantime, though, let's talk about Save the Children and Plumpy Nut, Dan. Yes. Starving children. And we're not talking about just kids that are hungry, may have missed a meal. These are starving children. Their bodies are eating themselves up. I've never looked, and maybe Cassie can real quick. And tell me how many meals you have to miss before you're considered starving. I'm guessing it's a month plus. I yeah, doubt if it's I, even I, a week or two. Maybe it is as soon as that. I don't know. I need to figure out what that is. That's a, that's a that great is. question. But the point being, when you're in starvation mode, you didn't miss a meal. You missed a lot of meals. Okay? That is correct. So something to think about, folks, as we're out here talking about all this immigration stuff going on, kids being separated at the border. You know, I get all that. Yes, our heart goes out to them. But right now, Horn of Africa, we have got kids that are literally, literally starving to death. Plumpy Nut comes along. They give them an application of that, may need even more than that. It's a medical-grade food that basically gets them back on track where they can eat and survive. A $60 gift will save one life. So if you can give any more than that, it'll help save more than a lot, more than one life. And right now, those are matching donations. So $60 does save two lives. It's really that simple. Save children, klz.org, 1-800-570-5155. Give them a call today. Go to the website. When you do, tell them Rush to Reason sent you. Larry's Automotive and Transmission is up next, and they would love to take care of your vehicle. And anything you need, they will handle it for you. 303-427-2108. Get in, get your checkup today, get ready for summer. And while you do it, please tell them that John and Dan and Rush to Reason sent you. Absolutely. Call Larry's Automotive and Transmission Repair today to make sure your car is ready to battle the heat this summer. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with your car during the cold winter months. Call Larry's Auto and have their ASE certified master techs look under your hood just to make sure your ride is in tip-top order before something goes wrong. If they don't find anything, you'll have peace of mind. If they do find a problem because they're members of Colorado Select, you know you can trust Larry's Automotive to fix it right. It doesn't matter if you need a coolant charge, if you need new tires, or a whole engine repair. Placement. Larry's Automotive and Transmission Repair will help you. Call Larry's Auto today and make your KLZ pre-summer checkup appointment. Don't get stranded in the sweltering summer heat because you waited too long and a small fix turned into a big deal. Call Larry's Automotive and Transmission Repair, 303-427-2108 or find us on the web at larrysauto.biz. Entrust your retirement planning to a registered financial consultant with over 35 years of experience. Call David C. Sean of Householder Group for a free consultation at 720-482-1917. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Stay up to date with Rush to Reason after the show on Twitter at Rush to Reason and on Facebook.com slash Rush to Reason. Okay, John, before you, uh, back to Rush to Reason. John, before you ask the next question, I yes. just want one more clarification from Kurt on the last thing we were talking about. So let's say you you do just have that thousand dollars down, and you said it's going to cost you more. About how much more percentage rate? And so what? That also reduces the amount of house you can buy too, correct? Well, yeah, because it all works on debt to income ratio, right? Depending on whether you're at 40, 45, or fifty percent, so it kind of varies where you're where you're going, whether you're buying a condo or you're buying a single family home. Um, but it, you figure if the rate goes up a quarter to a half, it's going to raise your payment about fifty to seventy five dollars a month. Okay, that so it's not. It is. It's, it's not the end you. of the world, yeah. but it's it does cost you more. It, it, it's going to affect you a little bit. Okay. Fair enough. All right, so somebody did text in yes. and asked, is it cheaper to build new versus buying something used? And, and I, I don't know if exactly this texture means cheaper to build, you know, buy new from a builder or go out, find a piece of land, and build a house. 
Normally, if you want to go out and buy a piece of land and build a house, it's going to cost you more money because you, you think doing them both at the same time. It's better to go buy, out and buy the land than the next day have the house built on it right. because they will do 100% financing. It's really unique the way that works. Okay. But if you're just going to buy, let's say, a track home versus going out and buying another one, the track home will have a tendency, the, uh, like what your son's doing, that house will appreciate faster than the current home because they keep building new homes around it and those prices keep going up That's besides right. the inflation you got to play that, keeps... that one you've got to play just right and this is what i helped richard with which yep. we did i mean you've the way you work that is if you can get into the project as it's beginning yes or a new section that just gets opened up and you're at the beginning phase of that if you're fortunate fortunate enough to be able to get into that and start that process early buy you know get into a contract buy early by the time your house is completed and they've done some of the neighborhood, typically speaking, you're going to get some decent appreciation 12, yeah, because it's already there by the yes. time you move in. Because the cost of everything goes up to build a house, so it's raising its base price. You get advantage of that plus the appreciation. Did it four times. Yeah. I know exactly how it works. Yeah, it, it works and pretty well. And you can well. do it. It works. And now, now, the downside to that is everything we talked about earlier, you do that four times. So you're doing landscaping. You're doing... You know, things to make the house yours, drapes, blinds, things like that. Yes, you're doing that four times over because every time you move, you're doing that again with that next new house. But if you can do all of that, your family doesn't mind moving, you don't care what school district you're in, blah, 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 off you go. And you can make money doing that. Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I'm living proof. I've done it. Yeah, if that works for you. I got somebody that he goes out and he buys duplexes as a primary, lives in them 18 months, turns around, buys another one. There you go. Turns it into a rental. It, it, you have to be willing to pay the price to get there, but right. it, it, it pays off at the end. Now, the new tax laws change that a little bit because to keep all of the equity in the money that you've made on the on the current house, you've got to stay in it three years. Is that three right, out Kurt? Of seven it is, but if you're buying a duplex as a primary, it, it, That's a different deal? It, it's completely different okay. because it only comes into play when you sell it and you lived in it for a period of time. Okay. So we always talk about this, and it's a big deal to, you know, to, to folks like myself and even Dan because Dan's you know, considered this as well. Self-employed, how does that work? Well, right now there's some, some very good programs that, that work out well for you, Dan. They have these 12-month and 24-month bank statements. Okay. So they'll just look at either your, if you have a business, they'll look at your business bank statements, take 75% of what you deposit over 12 months, and that's income. Okay. If you have personal bank statements and they seem to be higher, then they'll take 100% of your personal bank statements over 12 or 24 months. Now, we still have people, because you're employed, self-employed, that sometimes that's not enough money. To that, they've added what they call asset depletion. So you may have $100,000 in the bank or 120000 in the bank. They will take that, divide it by 120 months, and add $1,000 a month for income mm. along with your bank statements. So now, all of a sudden, you qualify and if you're self-employed, you've got money somewhere in most cases. Now, all of a sudden, they don't take the money. They don't tie the money up. They just say, if you've got that money, we will estimate your income on that as $1,000 a month, and we will give it to they you. They just look at it. They just look at it. So if it's in a 401K, a brokerage account, IRA, it doesn't matter. They will count it. Okay. What about uh, investment properties? How does, does that same thing that you just mentioned apply to somebody who wants to buy an investment property? In most cases, yes. You can do that on investment property up to 75%. And to go back to this, uh, the remodeling thing that yes. I didn't mention on re investment property, you can do the same thing on an investment property. That could be $300,000 to rehab to a duplex, a fourplex, or a house. So if you're buying a house, let's say you go out to buy a house and you can buy it for two hundred and fifty, and it needs $100,000 worth of work, you can get that whole loan as one. And then turn around and sell it for three and a half to four hundred thousand, because you've taken it that needed the work and you've done the work as an investor. He gets that, okay. So it becomes another great advantage. Okay, makes total sense to me. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about, which I do for just one quick second here, because I know we're running out of time. Wire fraud on the rise. How do people avoid any kind of wire fraud? Bef and you are very correct on this. Title companies have tightened down on trying to wire money or taking money. If you want to wire, and it's okay, you need to call the title company directly and talk to an individual to get the right information. Do not listen or read anything that comes across your emails because the majority of that is false. They'll Got change it. one or two little letters Got in the it. address and you're, there's people losing hundreds of thousands of dollars because they just wire the money. Without and actually following without through the title asking company. The oh, no, that's awful. It, it, it's really gotten bad. People, everybody's, I've, I've had a customer that there were three in line, and they were supposed to fall, and the first guy wired the money to the wrong place. It blew up all three. Wow. 
Wow. Be careful, folks. Yeah, it's extremely yeah, dangerous careful. now. Wiring money is really tough. All right, we're at that time, Kurt. Affordable interest mortgage, 7400 East Arapaho Road, Suite 109, Centennial, Colorado, 80112. Our phone number is 720-895-0500. We are regulated by the Division of Real Estate, an equal credit lender, and our NMLS number is 298-191. All right. Kurt Rogers, Affordable Interest Mortgage. Again, he'll meet you anywhere up and down the front range and always willing to help you with all of the questions we had today, plus a lot more because there's a ton.